Um, Sergey offered to show Kupla for those of you that are already using CUDA and that are interested in porting your CUDA programs to a more abstract or more a portable platform. Uh, we could show an, a quick Kupla example if there is any interest. Would you like to see that? Yes, I would be very interested. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, then I'll hand over control to Sergey and René, who are our Kupla developers, and they will uh, walk you through an example. Uh, yes, thank you, Jan. Uh, so should I share my screen? Or... Um, yeah, either you or René. I was not prepared. Okay, okay I, I'll do that. Okay, so let me just figure out how to do that. I have a lot of screens. So yeah, I guess it's this one. Do you see it now? We yes. see the yes. Okay, so yeah, so this workshop we decided to focus on the, on alpaca. Uh, however, together with alpaca, uh, as you could see in the alpaca, in the alpaca group, in our GitHub group, there is alpaca and also there is another library called Kapla that is a library that's built on top of alpaca, and it essentially provides a CUDA-like interface to alpaca. So if you use Kapla, your you program in a more or less good terms, uh, while uh, behind the scenes it's still alpaca, so behind the scenes it still can run on any accelerator and use all the other alpaca advantages uh, internally. And just to, I don't have any slides for it, but just to restate the idea, I think it would be quite easy if you just look at one of the examples. So in Kapla repo, we have a couple of uh, CUDA samples, uh, as if in CUDA SDK, just ported to Kapla. And I think it demonstrates rather well that it's all that the change is actually quite small. Uh, so basically, we kept everything from the CUDA SDK. The difference is that you, when you want to use Coupler, you instead of including CUDA stuff, you now include the Coupler header file that introduces renamings of CUDA API functions to Coupler functions. Uh, uh, I will skip the chrono for now. Uh, and if you just look at the function main. You could see that you program with all the familiar CUDA stuff, right? Uh, like CUDA like types. And then uh, if you want to allocate memory, it's good old CUDA malloc. And then CUDA mem copy, uh, et cetera. So all the CUDA API stuff, uh, by the power of this header, it will be remapped to a couple of stuff, which will in turn be remapped to alpaca stuff. Uh, and the only difference in your code, if you port existing CUDA code, the only difference is that now your kernel is not a global function like it is uh, in CUDA, but it needs to be wrapped up into a functor. Um, so in a packet style functor. So, so that's one difference. However, all the body is intact. For example, all this like block dim, block ID is just, it's just a macro that a couple of you map to alpaca index accessing functions. Uh, and yeah, so basically only the First line of the, of the kernel needs to be changed, uh, alpacafied with, with a uh, qualifier and the accelerator parameter. And of course, couple is the same as alpaca is standard C++. Uh, and so we cannot use CUDA Chevron syntax for kernel invocation. That's why we pro couple provides a macro to do that. So basically, instead of the triple uh, brackets CUDA style, you just use a couple of uh, kernel and macro. And all the rest is essentially the same. Uh, th that's why it, we find it's really uh, neat to, uh, to convert existing CUDA applications. Uh, this couple. And of course, this example now uh, can run on any accelerator that Alpaca supports. And how it's done technically is that, as you can notice that here, the API is like CUDA style, so we don't have this uh, lengthy macros, and et cetera. So how we do it technically is we substitute the accelerator and devices for Alpaca uh, under the hood. Uh, so in the implementation of such functions, it's done. And to do that, a uh, couple of poses an additional limitation that when you compile or when you configure with CMake, uh, you only activate one Alpaca backend uh, for Kapla. So uh, th that's why Kapla knows that uh, after it's built, what device to substitute uh, later. Uh, but then, of course, you could, if you want to, to support multiple, you could just automatize it on some uh, build skip level. Uh, 
And that's also what we do in PikmiGPU. So in PikmiGPU, we you have both direct alpaca and we uh, use alpacas for Coupla. And of course, also like if you just want to use alpaca directly, for example, here from Accelerator, you could totally do that, right? Because all Coupla has access to all the alpaca names. So it's just built on top. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for like a quick recap for Coupla. Uh, maybe I can Thank go. How oh, quickly you give me a microphone? Yeah, let's just. Sorry, we are both in the same room. Let me just find out how to do that. <laughs> uh, how do I exit this screen share? Yeah. Uh, on the top. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let, let, let me uh, uh, share, share my screen. Uh, can you activate that I can also my screen, uh, share my screen? I think you can only activate one at the same time. So Sega has to exit first. I think it's uh, near the top. My, my people's screen set up. <laughs> okay, done. Okay, uh, one, one second. I need to share my screen. Or one of the many. Uh, <laughs> So I hope you, you can now see again uh, the vector ad uh, yes. from my side. OK. Um, one, one, one special thing uh, that Guy already explained is uh, the, the kernel call. Uh, I'm on Kuka. The screen is extremely tiny. Yeah, could you... Oh, oh, sorry. A little bit, it would make it easier. Yeah, one second. Uh, Zoom is uh, allocating a lot of resources. Everything is very slow. Oh, is it, is it now better? Yes, much better now. Okay. Uh, uh, what you here he see with this is, uh, kernel call, there are three kernel calls. I can also go to, uh, later on to the documentation to explain it a little bit better. And uh, as you learned in the last uh, uh, four days, um, Alpaca has uh, for some accelerators some restrictions that you uh, need to take care uh, that. That the CPU backend, for example, the OpenMP thread, thread, uh, OpenMP blocks uh, accelerator, uh, only allows to have one thread per block. But if you you uh, program CUDA, you have always uh, multiple threads in a block. You use mo mostly at least uh, 32 uh, threads, or the most common is uh, 256. And this optimization is the, is 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 a small workaround that um, if you uh, launch the kernel for an accelerator with this restriction, this, the number of threads are not passed as threads per block. Uh, it will then pass as elements per thread. And thread per blocks will become one. So the kernel must be prepared to handle also the elements per thread. And I can go up. Um, you see, uh, this is quite common from from uh, CUDA block index, uh, block dimension, block index, thread index. In, in uh, Coupler, you have also additionally an element index. This is the element layer from Alpaca. And uh, you need to take care if you like to use this optimization uh, for the kernel launch. And if you also include this in your index calculation, um, then you're, you're fine and can, uh, you, you can run your kernel on a CPU and on a GPU accelerator without uh, uh, taking care um, 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 that this is a CPU or GPU accelerator. You don't need to handle it explicitly on the, on the host side where you launch, launch the kernel. And if you go to um, the code base back and into this documentation, we have a small uh, uh, mini guide how to port your, your CUDA code. And um, the most important is uh, that you have a replacing header instead of uh, including uh, CUDA. Uh, yeah, the CUDA header, you need to, uh, to include the coupler header, this coupler renaming header. And this must be uh, the first header because uh, coupler uh, uses uh, poor C macros to uh, do this renaming. And this is one restriction. If you don't like this restriction that it is required to be the first header, it is also uh, possible to uh, include a header is called only coupler HPP. And if you include this header, you don't, you can't use uh, the, the names uh, from CUDA, for example. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you can't use, uh, we have a function call. Oh. 
one second. Ah, let, let me go back to the example. So for jumping the fast. So we focus now to this malloc. Uh, if you don't use the replacing header, you use only coupler.hpp for the include. You need to name everything coupler malloc. Everything what is CUDA malloc, CUDA synchronized, uh, is then coupler malloc and coupler synchronized. So you, you are in a not new namespace, in a C namespace, you can say. Uh, and that's then, then all. You, you still have uh, the possibilities inside of the kernel uh, to access all the stuff. This becomes also a little bit different. Uh, let me see. It should be in the documentation. Oh, I, I, I need to skip this part. <laughs> I, I have this now uh, directly in my mind. Uh, but, but the other thing is that the tuning guide also in this uh, documentation and in the tuning guide, you have then uh, a little bit more information how you can uh, easily use this element uh, layer and uh, what does it mean? Because this means really you need to change a little bit the index calculation inside of your original uh, CUDA kernel. And um, Coupler also provides uh, um, and, and config header. This is uh, nearly equal to the uh, standalone header in Alpaca. I think Jan talked uh, a little bit about that. That, that, that um, Alpaca has a way that you can skip uh, the usage of um, CMake, but then you need to handle all the compiler flags and everything you need to set uh, to activate maybe a CUDA for Clang also, or, or if you like to use hit, you need to know really uh, which flex you need to use for your compiler. And the same thing we have also for um, for coupler, you, you, do, you don't need to uh, use um, a CMake. And uh, this is a configuration header. And if you use a configuration header, you include only, for example, if you like to use a zero accelerator, you include uh, the, the header file for the CPU, ZLL, HPP, and then uh, the accelerator will be automatically become a CPU ZLL, an Alpaca Z CPU ZLL accelerator. And you have also some configurations header for all, all the other accelerators. Let me go to, to the input for that. Coupler config. And here uh, you, you see the name uh, matches very well with, with what you saw already in uh, Alpaca and uh, the most common and the most useful is CUDA. And it, is, it will then set as a CUDA, CUDA uh, will use a, a header from Alpaca where you don't need to use uh, CMake, will set some, some other stuff in only for Coupler to be an, a header only library because normally Coupler is providing some CPP file, but that is uh, very detailed. Um, yes, this is uh, what I like to add to the GAIS introduction. Are there any questions? Yeah, I, I have one question. Um, I, I imagine you need to, if you, if you program CUDA style, um, you need you would need to restrict yourself a bit to the to a subset of, of CUDA because some things maybe not in not uh, uh, be supported on, on other GPUs or on other on other platforms. Do you have somewhere uh, a description of what would be useful to to use in as, as CUDA uh, from the CUDA API? Uh, uh, normally, from the CUDA API, there should be uh, nearly everything included. It could be that some interfaces are missing. Uh, then, if you need uh, really some uh, host site RPs, please open an issue. Uh, I have currently no list. It's a good idea to uh, assemble a list uh, with, with, with all the um, functions we currently supporting and which are currently missing. What we not support as uh, the same as Alpaca is. Um, the texture uh, stuff on the device side. Yeah. And um, 
uh, all other functions is uh, the same uh, what, what also uh, is supported by Alpaca. Uh, the good thing in Kappler is also you can use, if you have a CUDA, CUDA code, you can use uh, Kappler as first starting point to join into the Alpaca uh, world. Because you can here very easily uh, use your, your existing naming schemes and everything. You don't need to change too much, expect the kernel signature. And uh, you can mix also the alpaca code and the coupler code. You need to take care maybe uh, at, at some point that you uh, maybe don't, uh, uh, um, now you can you can mix it, make mix it very easy. What where you need to take care is um, let me go back to the example. Um, where you need to take take care that you now need to always uh, to pass this accelerator element inside of the kernel. And here, if you for example use this um, renaming headers from coupler and here there's a macro behind. This macro requires always ACC. This is also in the porting guide uh, documentation uh, explained that you always need to pass to your function your ACC. Wherever you use this block dim, you need to have an ACC really with this name uh, available. And uh, also for functions like sign and everything, you need this accelerator. If you don't have this accelerator, you can't uh, use a few functions from coupler. Um, the, the renaming headers are the, the, a little bit unsafe way because you have macros and you don't see really uh, is there an accelerator behind. The really safe way is to use only coupler HPP, HPP and then uh, use all the interfaces, uh, AP interface uh, functions with the beginning of with coupler because then you really see um, where you need an, an accelerator and where you don't need an accelerator. 